Welcome to All Things Moore County, Moore County's weekly radio show highlighting the many facets of the Sand Hills. That includes real estate, lifestyle, community and neighborhoods. And now from Four Properties, here's your host, Bill Sahadi. Good morning. Welcome to the talk show, All Things Moore County. Happy summer, Dorothy. Oh, yes, I have. I'm trying not to melt. It is definitely hot, summer. Hot enough for you? Uh, yes, more than hot enough for me. I know. Um, we mentioned on the show in the past couple of months that we're on our 10th um, year. Yes, we are. Of doing the show. And it's really interesting, how, first of all, how quickly the 10 years go. It zips by, doesn't it? Yep. And secondly, h- how much of a flavor of Moore County we've been able to... Um, put on a canvas over those 10 years Mm -hmm. and to talk about some of the things that seem to be um, benchmarks Mm -hmm. for what helps uh, to define Moore County. And you know that expression, it takes a village? Yes, I do. Right. So with all the different nonprofit agencies that we've had on in the past, and we've had many, Mm -hmm. um, today we're going to be speaking about um, some agencies. Okay. Okay. that are an integral part of Moore County, um, and some of the partnerships um, that they've forged and formed um, where they, in a way, kind of provide a net to many of the citizens of Moore County. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what age the uh, citizens are. Um, Moore County is a very giving community. Um, Yes, it is a very giving community. And um, back in 2011, I think, or 2012, we first had on um, Elizabeth Cox. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was at the time the executive director of Habitat for Humanity. And it was the first time that I had had an opportunity to speak with them. Um, Has it been that long? Yep. Wow. Mm-hmm. One of our guests on the show this morning was on that show, and that's Victoria Lopez, who is sitting at the head of the table, who is here today today. Um, who um, had purchased a Habitat for Humanity home, um, and seven years later, um, her family has um, grown. She has grown. Um, She's now a a real estate broker with Carla Williams. Uh, She's a mom of six, and she is representing a lot of what I was talking about, where you you pay it forward. and is here to talk to us later in the show today about the um, Women Build, um, which is an offshoot of Habitat for Humanity. Hmm. Um, to her right, um, uh, Joanne Conrad, who is here with the Kiwanis Club of Pinehurst. And that seems like it is not a normal fit, but we're going to find out today why it is. And um, Joanne actually was the spearhead um, for putting the show together. Um, and we're going to be tying in some of the things that Kiwanis is doing with Habitat, um, kind of like arm in arm. And as we go around the table, um, Kenna Wilson is here with um, an organization. It's a new organization through the Moore County Schools called the Pickney Build. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yes. I did. Yes. Okay. It's, um, we're, we're actually the alternative school for Moore County Schools, and it, we've been here for a long time but this is our first uh, build partnering with habitat we're going to talk about that and when you say partner with mm-hmm. um that's w- what makes more county so great absolutely everybody is partnering with everybody else because um, people are stronger when they work together as opposed to independently um to my immediate left um is Amy Fraley, who is the executive director of Habitat for Humanity, who has been on the show in the past. Um, um, And Amy, I think this is probably the fourth or fifth time we've had uh, a representative from Habitat for Humanity on, Um, and not your first time, so welcome back. Thank you. We love being here. Um, People think of Habitat for Humanity, and they have generalizations about what Habitat for Humanity is and what it is and misconceptions mm-hmm. and um, big picture can you just give us um, an outline a um, little bit of background about Habitat sure. and and what it is and what it does absolutely so I think a lot of people know us as a home builder and we are we build fabulous homes actually very energy efficient homes uh, great solid well built homes but often people think that we give those homes away to folks who are just saying hey I'd like a new house right. and 
as the former finance director, that is a part of this job now as executive director that I feel is most important. I want everyone to understand who purchases a Habitat home. Um, number one, that they purchase the Habitat home. So they have a mortgage payment that they make every month, and that's literally paying it forward so that other families can have an opportunity to buy their own home. And we are so proud of the families we get to build with. We sort of, we, we like to think we can find a lot of diamonds in the rough. Um, and Victoria is an amazing example of that. Sometimes people to come to us and perhaps they've had all kinds of discouragement and difficulties in their life. Um, but when they're in our program, we are just a really encouraging environment. And the transformation that takes place when someone builds their own home is amazing. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, Habitat International was uh, founded many years ago by Millard Fuller. Many people think Jimmy Carter started Habitat. He is our most famous volunteer for sure. Right. But he didn't start Habitat. But uh, Millard Fuller um, began with this uh, farm called Koinonia, where they were actually all building and sharing uh, space together. And they decided to take that concept internationally now um, and building for others. But the key is partnership. So everybody's got skin in the game. I think that's what I love about it. Um, as I came to Habitat, I also thought that all the houses were given away. But early on in my volunteering, I began to understand the model. And that is, to me, the most important part about Habitat. It's an investment on all ends. And it is uh, really our homeowners make it make it happen. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think that one of the most common generalizations is that Habitat's a, it's a home giveaway program. Right. And in fact, the people that um, buy the homes, not only do they have to have the credit to qualify for the, for the payment, they also participate in the um, construction of the home. Absolutely. They, they take an active role. So uh, to qualify for our homes, you have to meet us really strict uh, income guidelines. So we only build for families in our community who earn between 30 and 60 percent of our county's median income because we want to make sure they have enough money to make their mortgage payment affordably, but not too much money where they could walk into a bank and secure a traditional mortgage. But then above and beyond that, they also have to have pretty good credit. We mm -hmm. run a debt to income ratio, again, just to make sure that this mortgage payment is going to be comfortable for them. So it doesn't have to be perfect. And I will say that is the um, area where most people don't get accepted at first. But we have a great family services coordinator, Ellen, who works with countless families to say, OK, here's what you need to do about your credit so that you can come back next time and be successful. And then you have to be willing to partner. Um, and that is 300 hours of sweat equity. So most of our families, many single parents who have at least one job, often two jobs, they're raising children, and then they make time to spend 300 hours out there with us. And they're building alongside other people's homes and then eventually their home as well. So that's a great atmosphere. And then you have to have a need for affordable housing. So that's getting, um, it's getting increasingly difficult to find affordable housing in Moore County. Mm -hmm. And a lot of uh, folks think, oh, well, we're a wealthy county. Why, why do we even need affordable housing? Well, when you think about the folks who are working at our hospitals and in our hospitality industry, for them to leave work late at night, 11 o'clock, and have to drive to Troy or Hope County to find that safe, affordable place to be, um, we just don't think that's right. So we want to make sure that we have enough affordable housing here that we can create that for families who really want to invest in their future. What makes the housing affordable? What makes Habitat different than just a normal um, starter home that somebody might purchase? Sure. It's all about the interest rate. So ours is, in effect, zero. We um, are actually entering into a great new partnership with First Bank. They're going to be working with us, but we can we absorb the interest component of the very low interest rate that they're actually charging on these loans. And until this new partnership, we just extended the loan and we were the bank. But this is going to allow us to continue building faster and faster for more families. Right. Um, but for us, we wanted to make sure that it was in effect, a 0% interest rate for our homeowners. So they um, purchase the home at appraisal price, but that lack of an interest component mm -hmm. creates an affordable mortgage. And then we go above and beyond that. If, when we break it down, their monthly payment would be unaffordable, and for us, that magic number is 30%. If it's more than 30% of their monthly income, we consider that unaffordable. We will build in a silent mortgage that they never have to pay on as long as they stay in their home. Wow. What's the batting average? for the people that qualify mm -hmm. at the get-go who put in the 300 hours of sweat equity that fall off the wagon, so to speak, and, and um, become irresponsible, don't pay their mortgage. Um, 
What is your success rate? So there are several drop-off points. The first one is the night of, we call it sort of our um, open enrollment night. So we do that once a year now. Our next one will be in October uh, when people come in who have heard about Habitat and they think they want to to try this. So at our last one, last October, we had 70 families that came that night. Um, And in the end, only 15 left an application because we spent about an hour telling them what this process really entails, how it works. So they sort of deselect themselves out of this. Um, and so then you're left with your, your next group of folks who receive a home visit to make sure that they have a need for better, safer, more affordable housing. Uh, out of that group, we ended up with about eight families that joined us last year, sort of a starting class. Um, usually within that time, it takes about 18 months to get through the process generally. Uh, usually one or two might drop out. Um, and then once they have purchased their home, we have a pretty good success rate. So we have about a 12% delinquency rate right now. Mm -hmm. Um, And within that 12%, there might be people in bankruptcy, there might be something that happened, a big uh, situation that's going on in their world that we usually try to figure out a way to work them through it if it's a temporary setback. And then sometimes we get to a point where they are unable or unwilling to continue Mm -hmm. at that commitment level. Maybe they built this house when they were employed and had young children. Now they're on fixed income. They don't have a need for a three bed, two bath house and a big yard. So we just work with them and say, what's the best solution here? And that was always, when we were starting down that path that used to be something I feared but every single conversation has ended up very positive with the homeowner and what's great about Habitat is even the worst case scenario we're going to be paying out a good portion of their equity to them to whatever housing situation they're going on to next so even our worst case scenario ends up being sort of a a happy parting. I know areas in the state where the delinquency rate is a lot higher than 12 Mm percent and um, so what's the byproduct of putting a family uh, who qualifies to build a home with kids to raise a family, the the long-term byproduct is... So, um, it's really fun. By the way, Dorothy, when I... 10 years is a long time. I think I found the person who could easily succeed me. She's right here to the left. (laughs) Yeah, without question. Okay. So, so, um, I love the byproduct, and it's been really fun this year. You know, so we are like every construction company. We're like behind all the time, right? So a lot of times we get done with one house, and we just zoom on to the next house, and we don't take a lot of time to look back and see what has happened. But we just celebrated last year our 30th year building here. So we intentionally took the time to call some of our homeowners and say, what's been going on in your world since we last were together? Um, Because a lot of them, they're just mailing in their payment. They're, you know, we don't see them all the time. And it was fabulous. So we have kids going to college who are the first in their family to ever go to college. Most of our homeowners, that was one of the byproducts of it. Mm -hmm. Most of our homeowners were the first in their family to purchase a home. Mm -hmm. So it's this uh, sort of uh, generational impact that's happening. And Many of our homeowners said to us, you know, I had never really believed in myself until I built my house with Habitat. And then I thought, what's next? And so they just go on. We've had several who have started their own business or um, changed a career path. Um, And it's been really incredible. Plus the fact that I get to drive around our old neighborhoods um, when I'm taking new potential supporters out and see people working in their yards and just um, that sense of community that we have, Mm -hmm. um, it's overwhelming. One of the byproducts that I've seen firsthand is um, the kids that are raised in these families are not entitled. Right. They have a work ethic. You know who I'm talking about. Um, They have a work ethic. They don't think the world owes them a favor. They learn at an early age that they have to go out and to make things happen for themselves. And there should be a lot more of that right across the, you know, economic, the social economic structure, but not always the case. Um, So you want to replace me? Because you can. You're really good. (laughs) You are a great speaker. We're we're going to come back in the second set. We want to branch out a little bit. Um, um, That was a great overview of Habitat. We want to talk about um, some of the current partnerships. And we're going to go right down the table and and speak about all of that. This is All Things More County. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the uh, second set of All Things More County. Speaking about partnerships in Moore County, um, community partnerships. um, And we've started um, talking with um, Amy Fraley about Habitat for Humanity. But Amy... um, 
in addition to some of the benefits and some of the history that you've laid out in the first set, um, there are a couple of um, current partnerships that you want to talk about um, for 2019 and going forward that might be different than what Habitat looked like four or five years ago. Absolutely. So um, I always think of our different builds as having their own little personalities. And so we try to reach different audiences with each build and partnerships are a big part of that. And we need about 2000 hours to build every house that we do at Habitat. And that's a lot of volunteer time to mm -hmm. get out. Mm -hmm. So we're always trying to figure out how to get new people to the work site, especially people who might not have immediately thought that was a good fit for them. So I think that sort of uh, was the inspiration for Women Build, which we um, have Women Build coming up in 2020. It's already underway right now in terms of raising funds and getting friends together to come build in the spring. And we also have a business build. So we bring all of our uh, local employers together. And that's kind of a twofold selfish reason for me. Um, one, we love to build a house and have that support. But also, if our employers understand who we really build for, they are our best advocates for saying to a great employee that works for them, listen, this is something you might want to do. So we've had multiple homeowners who said, I never would have called here. I never would have shown up here, except my supervisor said I should do it. And so when our bosses in this community who do really care about their colleagues, and we have seen it and felt it, when they encourage their employees, that gives us great homeowners. I always say great employees make great homeowners. So. What if you get a volunteer like me who failed shop in seventh grade? You, you are my kindred soul. Could not play in a piece of wood. Couldn't make a salad bowl for my parents that was level <laughs> the olive and olive oil went uphill I would two left hands and it never left me what could I do someone like me if I don't have the skills to help build a home. It is amazing, Bill. So I am somewhat maybe comic relief when I'm out on the site, um, but I'm a good example of even somebody like me, they can put us to work. We have the most amazing um, supervisors. It takes a really special person to be a Habitat supervisor. You gotta be really smart. You gotta be able to build a great house. You also have to corral a bunch of newbies often who don't even know which end of the hammer to use, do it with patience and kindness and help them have a productive day because you got a house to build right and we do we have the most incredible construction team i've seen in the 12 years or so that i've been around habitat um, really proud to work with them so at the beginning of the day they sort of gauge the the room so to speak and see who's comfortable doing what and then they push you just outside that comfort zone so we've got women who seem to love the saw i will say and many of them have never been on a, a saw before um but we ease them into it and by the end of the day they're rocking it so they find the niches and after about 30 minutes you kind of have your well-oiled machine and you're like a real construction crew out there and it's a lot of fun so there's a place for everybody no matter what your ability or interest is uh, the youth build that you're talking about um, at Pinehurst, O'Neill, and Union Pines, mm -hmm. that's a separate uh, project, but it's also separate from the Pink Pinkney build, which it we're going to be talking about. So our youth build is over the summer, and it's funded by our gala. So our gala raised a net $120,000 this year. It was an incredible event. We got to honor Penny Ann Roth, who's been a great friend to us. Um, and then, but what I find is some of our gala attendees don't necessarily want to come out and swing a hammer. And especially in the summer, a lot of our volunteers are traveling. So we reached out to the schools, and they are filling our build days this summer. Uh, High schoolers that are 16 years and older come out. We build every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 8 to 1, and that's all year long. But this particular build, we try to get those high schoolers. So if, if anybody has a high schooler who's dawdling around this summer and they need to fill in with some good time, it's a great, um, great you know, way to give back. Uh, but that is, that's separate from our build that will start in the fall with the Pinckney Academy. So tell me about um, Kenna. Yes. Good, good morning. Yes, sir. Good morning. Um, tell me about the Pinckney Academy. It's a separate, it's it's related to the Moore County Schools, it, it not is, to Habitat. Right. It is It is one of the Moore County Schools. Okay. Um, we are the alternative education school, um, the Community Learning Center at Pinckney. Um, and we um, serve students through uh, from 7th through 12th grade. Um, and our students come to us for a variety of reasons. Um, they learn, they're different learners. Um, they may come to us because they've had some challenges with their behavior. Right. Um, some may come um, because of challenges with attendance, and some may come for challenges with academics, and some may come with all three. Um, but truly, they're, we're um, a school that provides uh, a place for them um, that is very individualized. Um, we, we practice restorative um, 
um, practices to support them in in their learning and um okay so as a layman i'm just yes, listening yes, so sir. you're trying to use these you're trying to get these kids on the straight and narrow um, yes, yes. Instead um, of having them fall off the wayside correct, and get in correct. trouble. Some, okay. some, some students who um, are scholars who have um, faced some obstacles, some um, not due to them to themselves. So they, they face some things in life, um, mm-hmm. experience some trauma um, in life uh, that, that has, has become an obstacle and they need some support. At Pinckney, we're very much a, a family. Um, uh, it's a very wraparound approach in all ways. Um, So when Amy approached us um, about working and doing a build with Habitat, it was um, it was a room full of kindred spirits. Um, We met and talked about the misconceptions that are often um, about the the clients for Habitat. There's also misconceptions about our scholars oftentimes just because of some of the things that they've been through um, in life. And so um, they are hungry to find success um, and to give. To their community and so this was a way for us to do that it was it was really amazing um, to have the opportunity can you be a little more specific about the type of um, kids and some of the issues that they bring to the table is it is it um, fi- financial perhaps yes sir mm-hmm. S- we have single parent yes sir um, we have students who are uh, the majority of our students are students who um, have lived in poverty or are continuing to live in poverty we have um, some students who are taking care of themselves or taking care of their own families um, some students who have experienced significant trauma um, we have some students who just um, uh, they're just surviving if yep. that makes sense yeah and so you're trying to show them there's a way to build up self-esteem. There's a way to uh, add value to, that they can give value to others. Absolutely. We, we had um, for, for several years um, a program, an initiative we call the Ambassadors Program, uh, developed by um, our staff where our students um, went out. It, every student who attended our school went out into the community and gave in ways by serving at a local nursing home. Um, we've had them do some small construction projects like repairing maybe a washed out bridge at, a, at an elementary school on a walking trail. Um, our young men and women would go if there was an elderly person person whose whose yard needed landscaping they would do that and we were reaching out in those ways um worked at the animal shelter and they they literally cleaned cages and i mean they really got in there because they're hungry to do that and they're often different kinds of learners so the hands-on learning was really rewarding for them and it it it, it spoke to their way of of thinking and learning um and and added to their their feelings of success so when um amy came and said um you know Uh, Kenna, this is a, you know, if you're interested, if your kids would be interested in this, and, and it was just, it was amazing, because it is right, um, exactly what our our students were needing. Um, And it just extended it out, um, you know, to the next level. And, and in this, in this moment, as we were talking, just the idea started sparking. And, um, you know, and it's, it's extended out to Sand Hills Community College that has stepped in with us. And now our students are not only um, getting the opportunity to give back, um, they're going to receive additional credit and credentialing from the community college. Um, we've, we've uh, got about eight or nine students um, and we actually have a girl who is totally pumped about being a part of this Um, so we are absolutely thrilled about that but we have eight about eight young men and one uh, young lady who is ready to get started and with um, Habitat's help with the town of Carthage's help by providing the land for us to do this our young men and women are going to do their academics um, take a college level course during the school day and then be transported uh, to the school or to the building site for four days a week to actually be learning on the job and um, earn a credential in, in, in different um, construction um, practices. And on top of that, this is about Moore County and the partnerships and the amazing things that happen. Sand L- Hills, love her yeah, well, Sand Hills has found a way oh my to. Um, a foundation to provide scholarships for those young men and and young women to have um, the continuing education credit classes in the evenings at Sand Hills, so that that that's free. They can go get a credential in electronic or electrical work, and I'm still learning. I'm I'm, I'm the one would be at the site learning as we go here too. Um, HVAC, um, welding, uh, machining. These are things that our young men and women. They just, when we, when we told them, to be honest, 
th- just somebody to feel like they're, they're they have value and and they'll they can add value um, to their community was amazing and they were all in and and I shared this at a recent meeting that Amy um, and the Habitat we attended with volunteers who are ready to stand with us and beside us in this journey with our kids. Um, our kids are ready and they and they've all they they'll walk through fire. For other people and uh and we, it sounds like they'll walk through fire for you well no they'll walk through fire for other people and and so often i, I you know i just think um I just think it's just us giving them the access and that opportunity. And I think that's what Habitat, Sand Hills, um, Town of Carthage, all those wonderful volunteers that came. Um, now Kiwanis, hearing about Kiwanis wanting to right. to be a part of what we're doing. It's just, it's a game changer for my school, yeah. for our school, for more county schools. We have a, more county schools supports the whole child um, and, and sees um, the need to support every learner and yeah. and when we when we have something like this and we're able to partner with with our community this way it it speaks volumes how um, long have you been a teacher i have been in education this will be my 24th year um i would start as a special education teacher um was an administrator this is my second year at pinckney i was a high school and middle school principal in a di- another district and this is my second year at pinckney so yeah, you, you couldn't be more genuine than you are. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Um, I, lo- I love what we do. I love our children. Really? I couldn't yeah. tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, you are you, you seem pumped. Oh, I am beyond. This is beyond. A, this is a new program. This is brand new. And, and you, you're right. It's a game changer. It's a game changer. It's a life changer for these kids. Right. Because without it, what are they, too much free time, trouble, they don't wind up getting jobs, they wind up working under the 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 radar so to speak right um they don't fill the tax rolls they they fill the jail cells um so yeah and and i think and i don't mean to interrupt you but i think it's so amazing because we we now in our communities hear so often from businesses and even as as consumers when we need something done that's not um you know in the construction field it's difficult to find those people and um, those folks that are really skilled and have integrity and i really believe in my team at pinckney and 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 uh the folks at sand hills and habitat and and kiwanis who's going to support us as well believe in our young men and women that they're going to be able to earn those credentials be professionals make those connections with businesses in our community so they're going to leave pinckney and they're going to go, and they're going to be that carpenter that you need that has integrity and, and does high-quality work because this door has been opened to them, because of the generosity of so many people across Moore County and so many, I mean, it, it, truly, I cannot express how much. Um, and, and I also said, you, you, know, um, you know, I'm speaking today for our children and for, uh, for this wonderful, uh, these people at this table and their agencies and organizations, but I can guarantee you our young men and women will be the people sitting next to, to, to you in a, in next year yeah. talking about how miraculously uh, just amazing yeah. the opportunity was. If I was a kid, a 15 or 16-year-old kid, and I was sort of uh, wayward, and I got to listen to you, you would light a light. Oh, well, thank yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, you really would. Um, we have a lot to talk about. We're going to come back in the third set. We're going to um, bring in Kiwanis. We're going to talk with Victoria Lopez. We're going to talk about some of the, the additional programs that Habitat is doing. Uh, this is all things more candid. We're back in our, our, our third and final set of all things more county, talking with Habitat for Humanity, talking with Pinckney Build, um, the, the Pinckney School, but also talking about partnerships. And um, the reason this show all came together is our next guest, um, Joan Conrad, with the Kiwanis Club. Kiwan- and you're not a native of North Carolina. No, I am not. You're from upstate New York? And my name is Joanne. Joanne. What did yes. I say? You said Joan. Oh. That's um, okay. New York, we get everything shorter. That's right. We just try to shorten it all up. <laughs> um, the Kiwanis Club has a, a storied history here uh, as a service organization. Mm-hmm. How did you get involved with Kiwanis, and how did Kiwanis get involved with Habitat? I'm really glad that you asked me that question because it dates back to when I was with the backpack program. Okay. Actually, I started out teaching children financial literacy in middle school. I started in High Point and then at West Pine Middle School. 
Um, they discontinued with the program, so we had to move forward. You know, we discontinued with it, so I no longer taught the children. Okay. Then I was invited to a Kiwanis meeting, and uh, lo and behold, the president sponsored me as a member, and he was also, uh, I was also on his regional council. Um, he sort of lured me into that. I had no choice. And then at one point, he sent out an email asking if anyone knows of anyone who would like this position as manager of the backpack program, please let me know. And before I could even think about it, I replied and, and pressed send and said I might know of someone who's interested. So there's a history with the backpack program, okay. which connects me with Pinckney because we delivered bags to Pinckney Makes sense. Okay. School as well. So Miss Kenna and I are going to have a very good relationship. Right. Because we understand. We truly do understand. Right. And from there, I've been at Kiwanis for five years. I'm now the president-elect. This is a perfect time for this whole consortium uh -huh. uh, gathering of people and this program because this is a good opportunity for us to include you, Pinckney, as one of our programs because I'm going to be working on the budget with the board of directors, the existing board of directors, and then our new board begins October the 1st. That's when I take over as president, and I will push this. Mm -hmm. And usually um, I, can, I can convince anyone to do what is important, so this shouldn't be a difficult task. So this will ultimately help Habitat right. and Pinckney. Right. And then, of course, Miss Victoria and I have a connection, too, with the Women Build. Right. So if I could just talk about the Women Build just a little bit, well, because I think we're, this, we're going there. This, this helps us to get a better understanding why I'm here anyway. I'm just a so, passenger in the car. <laughs> so the first time I attended a Women Build gathering, it was at the Clara McLean House. This was October of 2017. There was a woman I really wanted to speak to. She was sitting in the corner. So I walked over. We had a half-hour conversation. And she told me about the true purpose of Habitat for Humanity. So Alicia Hockaday continued to speak about her journey with Habitat, her life, her children, her grandchildren, which she was raising with Linwood Lee. And her compelling story was both emotional, yet very positive, very enlightening. She inspired and convinced me that Habitat was a great opportunity to learn and embrace the love and the giving of this community. She really did. She solidified not only my getting involved with Habitat, right. but even my involvement with Kiwanis. Right. So Amy Fraley then continued to exquisitely explain to me that Habitat is a hand up and not a hand out. And you know, when I worked at the backpack, it was a little different, mm -hmm. different concept, uh, different model. But this really resonated with me. And then Less than two years later, I was involved in the Women Build with the gala and just just going full speed ahead and having a wonderful time meeting wonderful women in this community mm -hmm. who give everything that they've got mm -hmm. to keep these programs going. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of events and fundraisers, and we started to develop a partnership with Habitat. Stacy Lieback is one of our members. And we have been going full speed. She is able to conjure up many key club kids from Union Pines and Pinecrest to help with the gala, which was a major coup. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love that. And our model is really children 18 and under. So when Amy talked to me about this opportunity with Pinckney, I just thought, you've got to be kidding me. In Sandals Community College, I, I just questioned, how does this happen? How mm -hmm. does this really happen? Mm -hmm. So we do encourage service leadership programs, and I think Pinckney would be a perfect, perfect program for our Kiwanis Club in moving forward. We're going to review this at our budget within the next, well, our meeting is Tuesday. We're going to include this in our agenda. We're going to make a couple revisions. I'm going to see the secretary today, and no one can say no to me. It's true. I'm sensing that. <laughs> yep. It hasn't happened yet. I don't expect we're going to have a problem. And really, you know, these, these leadership programs teach kids the skill sets and volunteering experience. It helps their mental health. It helps their confidence. And you could see it. Mm -hmm. I do read to Head Start children, and I can see these kids go from sitting in the corner trying to be invisible 
to being right up front mm -hmm. and trying to gain all the attention. Right. So I know that these programs do work, and it's a very exciting opportunity, I think, for all of us. And Victoria and I sit together when we volunteer at Habitat. So tell me about your relationship with Victoria. Well, I didn't know that you were a homeowner, a Habitat homeowner. Um, I was just, you're, you're just a beautiful woman, beautiful eyes, very easy to talk to. And we just sat together for, what, was it almost an hour not long ago, and really, really got to know each other. Yeah. And it just, it just um, solidifies that all of us from everywhere in the world right. can work together towards one goal. Right, right. Yeah. Love your commitment. I mean, steely reserve, too. And I believe you. Know, I don't think anybody could say no to you. They can't. No. <laughs> I got it. Um, Victoria, um, you've been involved in the community in a lot of different ways, and um, you've listened to three um, spokespeople today talk, and in many ways, um, some of the virtues of the programs um, ha have been a directly or indirectly beneficial in your family, and you have the mentality, and I know this personally, of always trying to pay it forward. You pay it forward with your kids, you pay it forward with other people, and it's, it's basically it's a service to others. It is, and and in, in a lot of ways, that's what Habitat does, but to deserving and to credible applicants. Um, um, so are you involved going forward with the Women Build, and is this going to be uh, a home just targeting a specific group of women leaders in, in Moore County? Well, first of all, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for wonderful women sitting here right. like this today, right. fighting on behalf of women like me who right. are trying to rebuild their lives and have right. um, safe, affordable, wonderful housing. Right. And people like you, Bill, who right. support and encourage, and you've uh, supported me and my family and business yep. and friendship and mentoring my children. Right. And I'm thankful that I can be here and say that. It has revolutionized my life and changed my life right. and my kids' lives. And we wouldn't be where we are if it wasn't for Moore County. Right. The people here that gave didn't even know me and supported me, got mm -hmm. behind a cause. Uh -huh. And um, I'm here to um, share the same. I want to do the same for other women, other families, right. other children. Right. Um, for what people have done for me and my children. Right. So, Kenna, her kids have mm -hmm. already gotten to the other side. Completely and utterly. I mean, if, if we all disappeared tomorrow, mm -hmm. right, and her children were here where they are, they're prepared to move forward. It, and you're trying to get your kid, all your kids to the other side. They're already there. I mean, they are. And we want to give those children tools. And we want to let them know we believe in them and that they have talent and they have abilities and they have giving hearts. And they will be your best kids because they have been through things and right. they empathize right. and they don't judge and they care. Right. And they're fighters and they're strong workers and they're achievers and right. overcomers. Right. The other thing I sense at the table um, listening to all four of you is that um, every single one of you, um, genuinely speaking from your heart, this is radio. But so we have a video camera, right? So people can see. But if we didn't have a video camera, the message would resonate just as honestly as it's coming through my headphones today. And that's very unusual. Some people come on the radio and they talk, but you go, why are you here? In other words, a little more oomph, a little more, right? But that's all coming through clearly. And that's why this could be done without a video. But the fact that we have one is just... Um, extra um 2020 looking forward talk a little bit about future vision uh goals for habitat what are you, what's coming up what's on the agenda what are you hoping to achieve and where where would you be a year from now so many great things on our plate this year. Um, really, this First Bank partnership might be a big game changer for us. Wonderful It'll, people. It, yeah, oh, they are. They've Wonderful people. They've been fabulous people. to work with. Mm -hmm. And what it allows us to do is not be sort of um, 
uh, hamstrung by finances as much as we're looking at the year and what we can accomplish. So we are able to generate more cash for the next build and the next build more quickly. It uh, gives us a lot of freedom. So we are increasing our building, uh, new construction as well as repair. A lot of people don't understand that we do that as well. So our repair program targets um, non-habitat homeowners, usually elderly and disabled members of the community who might need a wheelchair ramp or a roof replacement, something to help them age in place safely and affordably. And if we as a community can come together and do a $2,000 project for them, then that's great for all of us because they'll be able to stay in that home longer. So we're really gonna be ramping that up. Mark Trudeau is overseeing a repair program and it's just exploding. So that's a big area um, that we're growing in. The Women Build's gonna be fabulous. Mm -hmm. And I want to point out that Victoria is actually the co-chair for our Women Build um, with Sally Brown. And she is, we are just so, so incredibly proud of everything that Victoria has done and means to us at Habitat. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned, we also have our business build coming up. It'll start in the fall. We're gonna have CEO day on October 25th. And last year's CEO day was a great time. It's just a, neat way for uh, you know those those folks to exchange suits and ties and uh, heels for tool belts and t-shirts so um, that'll be a lot of fun and then the women build will start in the spring and we will also have a we actually have our faith build our apostles build dedication next week and then there will be a apostle build 2021 that'll be ramping up next year and that's a chance for all of our faith community to come together and build um, I want to go right through the table real quickly and get some contact information uh, because one of the things um, uh, with websites, volunteers are always a, a, a big challenge. Um, and if people who are listening are interested in the Kiwanis Club or getting interested in working with your program, Jen, or your program at um, Habitat, uh, where would they go to get more information? I'll start with you, Amy. Sure. For us, we call our office, 295-1934. Rosemary Weber is our um, volunteer manager. She will get you plugged in. Usually, she'll actually sit down with you and see what would be the best fit. Keep in mind, we have construction. We also have Restore. Um, we also have our administrative offices. Or sandhillshabitat.org is our website, and lots of good information there as well. Perfect. Can I ask you the same thing? Yes. Um, you can go to the Moore County Schools website online um, and follow our link to our school. Um, again, the Community Learning Center at Pinckney. Um, and uh, you'll find contact information there um, and can email, call. Um, and, and we're, of course, open to any support that we can, we can receive. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, Joanne, Kiwanis, uh, uh, volunteers are uh, always a challenge. Yeah, yes and out. no. Yes and no. Of course, we're always looking for dedicated people. Okay. I would be more than happy to give you my contact information. Please. It's uh, J O D as in dog, A N 347 at Yahoo. And there's a number 910 Sure. Be glad to hear from anyone. Wonderful. And Victoria? Um, if people want to reach you, whether it be for your, your budding real estate career, your participation as a co-chair for the Women Build, how can they reach oh, you? Okay. Victoria Lopez uh -huh. at kw.com. And my uh, cell phone number is 910-315-3867. Yeah. And I'd be glad to encourage or speak with or guide or direct anyone that I could help. What about people who are contemplating... Um, getting involved in the Habitat program with a young family. Would love to. Right. Would love to hold their hand through it. Right. You know, guide them, help them, encourage them. Right. Um, and the life-changing things that will take place, not only from, you know, applying to Habitat, but as well as giving to Habitat, because all right. homeowners give. They support one another. They build for one another. Their lives are strengthened by learning skills. Um, and it's just, so, and then the Habitat team, is they're all wonderful coaches and encouragers and it's a wonderful family that brings you into the fold as well as the community thank you yeah, awesome. amy fraley thank you thank you kenna wilson Thanks thank you so much. joanne conrad thank you and victoria thank you. lopez thank you all <laughs> you were um you were all terrific um i've enjoyed listening to all of you and Wish you the best of luck in the next year. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Thank you, so you Bill. This is all things Moore County. Have a great week. Thank you. Thank you.